action buttons allow you to optimize your workflows, cutting out clicks and putting information at the point of need. Welcome to QuickBase Junkie. I help QuickBase builders learn fast to deliver more. In this video, we'll build three types of action buttons and I'll share a toolbox that will enable you to build countless others to suit your needs. The first action button we'll build is save and go home. The next action button will open documents in a new tab. And finally, we'll build an action button to open the latest child record from the parent record. If you haven't already, you can download everything you need to make these action buttons and more at quitbasejunkie.com slash toolbox. For this demonstration, I'm using an app from the App Exchange called the Simple Project Manager. Let's get started with our first action button. We'll start here on the task table. Action buttons allow us to leverage actions through the URL. If you notice this particular URL, you can see it starts with what's called the URL root. That's the first part of this URL that contains the company name as well as quickbase.com. It's followed by a little db slash the ID for the table or the application. And then we've got a question mark and our action prompt. What follows this A equals action prompt is our action. In this case, TD displays the table homepage. But we're going to create our own buttons that use these actions. So let's start by adding a new task. In this particular app, it's common to enter a task and then go back to the home page. So rather than have users add a task, then save that task, then navigate back to the home page, we'll make an action button that does it all for them. I'm going to start by choosing where I want my action button to live. I think I'm going to put it at the very end of the form. So that way when they're done, the button is there. So I'll right click and I can easily add a field after this one. I'll choose create a new field and I'll call this go. The field type is going to be a formula URL. This lets us create that URL using a formula. Just uncheck this and click done. Now that I've added that field, I can go ahead and populate the formula by right clicking and choosing edit field properties for this field. The URL will start with our URL root. QuickBase makes this easy by providing us with this function called URL root. This function will automatically pull in your particular application's URL root. So that's like your company name followed by quickbase.com. Then we're going to append using the ampersand that db slash. And now the entire URL will actually end up being text. So we will need to insert these little bits of text in between any functions we have by putting them into those double quotations. Then we're going to append another piece. This next piece is what will actually allow us to go home. This is called the app ID. It's another function that will pull the application's ID, which ultimately is the destination for that home page. In this case, that's it. That's our whole formula. The URL root plus the db slash and the app ID will take us home. Now here's our options to set the button, but first let's take a look at what it looks like before we turn it into a button. Before we change that URL into a button, we can see the full URL string. So the URL root also puts in the HTTPS as well as the URL root, the slash at the end, and then we added the db slash and that destination, that nine character ID for the application. And if I click on this, it will take me to the app homepage. Perfect. But we want this to be a button and we want to make sure it's saving. So let's go back into our tasks. I'm going to open a task that already exists here and scroll back down to our button. We'll right click, edit the properties for this field, and now we're going to turn it into a button. To do that, 
we're going to choose the link text. This is what will display on our button. So we're going to save and go home. Perfect. We're going to display it as a button and choose a button color. I'll click save. I'm going to go ahead and modify this task name so that way we can see what happens when we save. Okay. And I'm going to click the save and go home. Now it's asking, do I want to save this record? This is the exact sort of thing we want to avoid with these action buttons. We want to make it easier. We want it to minimize clicks and be at the point of need. So this isn't actually saving steps unless we go and make one additional modification. So I'm going to click cancel and then jump into the task table settings and scroll down to the advanced settings and scroll down to the advanced table settings section here. This very first option says save parent record automatically when a child record is created. Now you might assume that this only pertains to what it says. Not the case. This will actually apply anytime you're navigating away from a record. Basically saying if you navigate away I want you to save the record. It really doesn't matter if it's a parent, if it's a child, or otherwise. So I'll check the box and click save. Go ahead and navigate back to our record. And I'll update the name again. And then go down to my save and go home. We saw it was saving. And now it's taking me to the home page. All with just that single click at the bottom of my task. If I head back to my tasks, I can see that name did in fact update. It is now get approval, which is exactly what we wanted. Woohoo! <laughs> All right, let's look at the next button. The next button pertains to our project. For each project, we have documentation that's required. And for this documentation, there are templates. Those templates are stored in our documents table. This documents table isn't standard with the simple project manager. I've added the documents table. You could do the same, but basically when someone is working on a project, we want them to be able to open any templates that they might need to assist them with their project. So let's look at a project. So here's a project and I want to add that button here so that way while someone's working they can look at those documents to get any templates that they need for the project. I'm going to add a field after this one. Scroll down to create a new field and this will be project templates. Again, this is our formula URL. You could technically use a formula rich text if you're familiar with creating buttons with rich text formulas. Those would work as well. I will uncheck this box. Click done. And now I've got a empty formula field for our project templates. Go in and edit the properties for that field. And we can add in our formula. We'll start again always with that URL root followed by the db slash. Now what comes next, previously we had our app ID which took us to the home page, but now we need an ID that will take us to our documents table. What is a best practice is to use what's called a table alias. The table alias will pull in the necessary ID for that particular table. So where do we find the table alias? We find the table alias in the advanced settings for that table. So I'll just open these settings in a new window and I'm going to choose our documents table. Scroll down to the advanced settings and scroll all the way to the bottom. All the way at the bottom we can now see our table alias. In this case it's the underscore dbid underscore documents. I'll jump back to our other window with the formula and within square brackets 
I will paste in that table alias. So now I've got the beginning part of our URL string, but we really still need to give it more information. Unfortunately, this isn't enough to tell it where we want it to go. So we're going to append this to another bit of text, and this text is going to be our query string. A query string is going to always start with a question mark, and then whatever comes after is the query. For these action buttons, the very first thing after the question mark will be A equals. This is the action prompt. The action prompt is what's going to basically start the action, but we're going to tell it which action do we want it to perform. For this particular button, we want to see the home page of the documents table. That way we can see all of the documents. That home page action is called TD. You might have seen that previously when I zoomed into the URL bar at the very beginning of this video. A equals TD will take you to the home page for the table. And in this case, the table is our documents table. We'll set the button. Choose another color. Give it a name. Open templates. And now we want to open the target in a new window. We want to be able to continue working on our project while opening the templates in another window. I'll click Save. And I'll just show you here. I can be editing. Let's change this to completed and medium, what have you, and click our button. It's now opened a new tab on my browser, showing the documents table with all of those templates, but I still have open in my other tab the project that I'm working on, and it hasn't forced me to save, it hasn't navigated away, it hasn't lost my progress, it simply opened in another tab my templates that I can then download and reference while still working in my project. All right, that was action button number two. So I mentioned you can get all of these action snippets and all of the code to put these together in different forms that work for you in the action button toolbox that you can download at quickbasejunkie.com slash toolbox. But we still have one more button to create. And that button is to open the very latest child record associated with a project. We want to be able to, with one button, open that task immediately, show it in another window. How do we do that? This one requires a bit of a helper field in order to allow us to identify what was the last task created. To create that helper field, I'm going to go into the settings, and I'll open the relationship between projects and tasks. Here on the relationship, I'm going to add a summary field. This will be a summary that is the maximum of the task ID. This may also be the record ID number. Essentially, you want the key field, assuming, of course, that key field is a number that increments, and click Create. I'll just call this. Okay, now with that done, we can head back to our record. And I'll scroll down. I'm going to add that button just after this other button. Choose new field, open latest task. Our URL formula, click done. Now we can populate our formula. You wanna guess what we're gonna start with? <laughs> That's right, the URL root, followed by the DB and a slash. And then what comes next? We wanna reference the table alias for our tasks table. This happens to be the underscore DBID underscore tasks. Got this wrong, DBID tasks. Of course, always a good idea to double check that in the table settings, but it will give you an error if it doesn't exist. So that's an easy check as well. And then this will be followed with our text string that contains our query indicator or the question mark, 
our A equals, we're always going to start this way, and then this is going to be our action. What action do we want to have happen? Well, we can either show that task in edit mode or in display mode. If we wanted edit mode, we would use ER here. If we wanted display mode, we'd choose DR. Let's leave it as DR. This is going to be followed by an, another ampersand. In this case, because it's in between those quotations, it's part of the text string. These ampersands, they help to designate different parts of the query. So we started with the action part of the query, and now we're going to include the ID for the record. So you need the RID, record ID, and setting that equal to the record ID. That was our helper field. Because that's a field reference, we need to now pull this out of the text string, include another ampersand in order to append that field. And that field was latest task ID, which contains the maximum task ID that happens to be related to whichever project we are on at the moment. So here we've got our final URL string. I will choose my link text, latest task, and then we'll display this as a button. Choose a button color, and choose whether we want it to open in a new window or in the same window. I think in this case, again, you're on the project. Let's leave the project open and also open the task in a new window. Click Save. Okay. Now looking at our tasks, we can see our list of tasks here. They are in order by date. So you might think this last task is what we want. Unfortunately, that is not the latest created. The last one created based on task ID in this other column is number 82. That was the maximum task ID that was created. If you did want the maximum start date, there is a way to pull that as well. You need a few more helper fields in order to do that. You can see an example that's somewhat similar in another video I have called Time Tracking with API Buttons. Well, let's test out our button. We'll click on Open Latest Task. And now we've opened the task in another tab for number 82, which was our latest task. If we look up here in the formula bar, you can see we've got the URL root followed by the db slash, the actual table ID, our query prompt, which is the question mark, followed by the action prompt of A equals, and then our action, in this case, display record, the record ID, which is number 82. I can also come in here and edit this to ER in the action, and this would have brought us to edit the record if that's what we wanted to edit the record in a new window. So the three buttons we created first was the save and go home, which allows us in one click to save the record and return to the home page using that advanced setting where we checked the box for save parent with child. And then on our projects, we added two buttons, one to open the documents table, which I called open templates, and then another to open the latest child task. You can find many more uses for these action buttons as well as many more actions that you can leverage within your action buttons at quickbasejunkie.com slash toolbox. I hope you enjoy the action button toolbox and creating all these wonderful action buttons. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and subscribe using the link below. You can also drop me a comment and let me know what you thought and what you enjoyed the most. And then head over to quickbasejunkie.com to grab one of those free downloads. <laughs> Bye for now. Using the link below. Using the link below. Bye for now.